there was an interview that I did um, with Selena Gomez. I went live on Facebook at the same time. And it was just crazy because I was going to kind of try to look decent because I was going live on Facebook. And uh, one of the things that they said is don't mention anything about um, her relationship. But her and I got into this conversation, and I guess she forgot that I'm interviewing her, and we're <laughs> chit-chatting, and she revealed that she was dating... Hey guys, welcome to the Troy Grambling Podcast. As always, it's an honor to get to hang out with you. Now, our goal on the podcast is always to talk to interesting people about their story so that we can all reach our destiny. We can accomplish the potential for which we were created. And today, well, we've kind of got a celeb a local celebrity, a national celebrity, oh. maybe a worldwide celebrity uh, in today's internet radio. The adjectives are great. I love them. Keep it going, Pastor Troy. <laughs> <laughs> so we have... Ivy Unleashed. It's, it's Evie, but it's okay. What I say, Ivy? But it's you know okay. What I'm saying? You're, you're because pronouncing I've been looking right. at your name all day, and I told Giselle, I said, I'm going to say Ivy. But you know what? That Because you're speaking English. It's okay to speak English. The thing is, is that in Spanish, it's Evie. Really? So we're in South Florida. So if you ever see an Ivy, say, hello, Evie. Evie. You know, it's it's Evie in, in Spanish. Oh, so see, it took me a while. That's the way, like, with Jose and Jesus. It's, it's same thing. <laughs> no, it's Jesus and Jesus. That's right. It yeah, took me exactly. a while to... <laughs> It's very true, just like that. But yes, thank you, thank well, you. Well, thanks for being here anyway. I'm excited. Evie. Yes, thank you. I guess we have to start with that. How did you uh, get that, that name, Evie well, Unleashed? Evie Unleashed. The Unleashed part kind of scares people sometimes. Like, hey, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So my real name is Yvonne. And when I started my radio career, um, there was an artist by the name of Evie Queen that when she first came out was all over the radio, was a queen of Spanish reggaeton music. We were playing it like crazy on Power 96. And my friend told me, you're going to be the queen of radio. You need to be the queen of radio. So your nickname will be Evie. And then Unleash came when um, I got uh, promoted to a night show. And they say, hey, it's nighttime. It, you could be you. You don't have to be as preserved as during the day. Be yourself. Show off your personality. So that's how I became Evie Unleashed. Evie Unleashed, you were telling me earlier that people... Uh ask you to do your radio thing and that's what they want you to yes, do. Yes, because you know, some with radio you don't see. Now with social media you can see people, but they're like, hey, can you do the Evie thing? I'm like, what's the Evie thing? They're like, how you do it on radio? So like, hey, what's up? It's Evie Unleashed. They're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, uh, so now that was when you started the night show. Correct. But now you do the morning show. And, and you know what? That's actually been a topic. Do we remove the Unleashed? Because they're like, um, you're now a mom of three. You're not out clubbing <laughs> like you used to. Uh, uh, Things have changed in the last 20 years, Evie. Evie, and we actually um, had people call in and we had people vote, but people say it's just your staple and that's who you are. So we kind of stuck with it. So now did you give them a yes or no, or was it, did you give them other options? No, just yes or no. Just yes or no. <laughs> ah, see, I think we need to come with some other options. That's possibly. true. But you know what? I've had the name for so long. It kind of sticks with you. And then I'm like, I, I don't know. What else would you think? I, I feel like an Evie now, you know, an Evie uh, Unleashed. So I don't know what else I would call and myself. And if you ever changed it, everybody would grab that handle. So you would never see it again. There was this one girl with the name Evie Unleashed years ago. Nobody knew who she was before social media blew up. And she wrote me this long email saying, that's who I am. You took my name. I said, sorry, I didn't mean Mean to, but nobody knows who she is now. <laughs> uh, that, well, that's a, such a big thing. Handles are it, such a oh, big. Oh, and now it's a big thing. People, I mean, it, it goes with their website, their handles, their social media, everything. So yes. You know, years ago in 2010, when we changed the name of the church mm -hmm. and we changed it to Potential, we the congregation voted on it. But one of the ways we came up with Potential is because we could get all the handles, which was pretty miraculous. Oh, nowadays, people when their babies are born, they create their emails, they create their handles because it sticks with you. So. I'm glad potential has potential. <laughs> now, tell so tell me a little bit. You mentioned just quickly, but you're a mom of three. So tell yes. us a little bit about who you are away from the station. Okay. So um, I was born in Compton, California. Um, I am one of four. I was raised by a single mom. And as she navigated uh, through being a single mom, she moved from California to Alabama to Texas I graduated high school. I always loved music. And after high school, I moved to Miami slash South Florida. And um, I used to love to sing. And um, I always wanted to be a singer. And my mom was like, you know, typical Latin mom, you need a backup. You're not going to just be a singer. So I said, okay, 
I'll uh, go to community college, become a music teacher. And in the meantime, I'll pursue my dreams. So I said, how can I become a singer in South Florida? And you know, there's so much talent here. Right. So I said, I'm going to work at a radio station where they play music. How about that? So I uh, decided to um, uh, get into radio. I said, I'll mop the floors. I'll do whatever. And I started kind of like an intern answering phones. And then um, I ended up having a love for radio and forgot about singing. I uh, got married. I ended up divorced. Um, then I found the love of my life two years ago. And uh, now I have a seven-month-old daughter, a nine-year-old son, and a bonus daughter um, who is 11 years old. So I'm cooking, cleaning, working, and, um, and totally insane. <laughs> <laughs> and headed towards the teenage years. Yeah, oh, don't even, don't even. So yes. now tell, tell me that again. So how many boys and girls? I have uh, two girls, 11 year old and seven months. See, when you have multiple ah, kids, you got to think. Yes. It takes me a second, but yes. Now, two do girls. you call them, do you ever call them the wrong name? All the time. Yes. I don't know who I'm going to yell at. This, the, 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 the. you yes. always mix up so the now names. I don't, my kids are much older now, of course, but if they're listening, they need to hear you say that because they always gave me a hard time. Because Now, you know what's worse nowadays? The older the kids have gotten, the more important my animals have become. Ah. So it's really bad, though, when you call your kids <laughs> the dog's the name. Dog's all, oh, now that, that's bad, Pastor Troy. I can't back <laughs> you up on that. <laughs> but uh, that just means I really love my little dog. Exactly. Uh, uh, but uh, but anyways, they, if they're listening, it does, maybe not a dog, but you have miss, Yes, it's all love. It. It's all love. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So how old were you when you got into radio? I started right out of high school. Wow. Um, I mean, I right out of high school, I took a couple of years working odd jobs. Um, I guess I was like 20, 21. So now what was your first on mic, on on air um, position? My on, my, what was it? Let me see. Um, I think Yachika Evie. Chica was like a cool name back then. And then that lasted for a couple of years. And then when I actually uh, got like on a morning show, that's when they changed it to just EV and then EV unleashed. So wow. I kind of evolved a little bit. Wow. So, so you were, so you were morning, then you went to evening. Well, how about this? I've been on every shift at the station. That's the crazy part about it. I started overnights, which nobody wants to do. Then from there, um, I got blessed and, uh, met, uh, a guy by the name of DJ Laz, which you probably know his uh -huh. wife used to work here. And, uh, he was, an afternoon guy and they offered him a morning show and he needed a crew. And I don't know what I said. I said something funny and he's like, Hey, we need a sidekick girl. Would you like to be part of my show? I'm like, sure. And I did something live on air. He's like, okay, you're hired. And then I did a morning show with him for seven years. Then I got promoted to my own show from 10 AM to 2 PM. Then I got the night show. Then I got the afternoon show and then, uh, back to mornings. So I've kind of been around there. Now, which ones, do you, which ones do you like the best? The mornings are beautiful because you have the most amount of, I think, connection with people calling in right. and getting to really know people, having real conversations. Um, but it's definitely the most challenging because you're waking up at 4 a.m., especially as a mom, especially being a mom of a newborn. It's very hard. The first time I did the morning show, I said I will never, ever do it again unless they pay me buku bucks or something crazy happens. And I did it again and they didn't pay me buku <laughs> bucks. And um, <laughs> I had no choice. But you know what? I love it. I, I, I love it. it. It takes sacrifice. But I mean, I don't know what else I'd be doing. I love connecting with people. Yeah, there's. It seems like in the morning shows, there's like you said, a lot of interaction, mm -hmm. a lot of contests, mm -hmm. a, a lot of craziness. I guess you really get to know people, and you have your regulars, and then it's kind of crazy when you're at Walmart or Target and you bump into somebody, and you like you don't know them, but you know them. You're like, hey, people always say that they're like, I feel like I know who you are, and I'm like, I feel like I know who you are too because you follow each other <laughs> on social media and stuff. <laughs> it's really, it's really awesome. And now you can even like you were saying because of social media, they don't See? just hear your voice; mm -hmm. they now know what you look like as mm -hmm. well. And I always apologize because uh, <laughs> when I see people at Target or Walmart, I say, look, this is without a filter. <gasps> this, <laughs> I didn't put lip gloss on. This is the real me. And you know what? That's just life. And they're like, it's okay. I relate. Here are my kids, too. So that's a cool thing is that the more real you are, the more you can actually connect with people. Now, how big a market is Miami compared to the rest of the country? Um, 
I believe it's in the top 10. Um, LA, New Yorker, obviously number one, but we are in the top 10. And as far as locally here in South Florida, in Miami, my particular radio station, Power 96, has the most cum. And what that means is that um, at a certain given time, we have the most people listening. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in, the- in all of South Florida. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's cum. Now, people come in and out of the store, meaning right. it, ratings are dependent on how many people are listening and how long they listen. And that's how ratings are calculated. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. So what kind of music? Um, we've evolved. Um, it's kind of... Top 40-ish, top 40-ish. We throw in, of course, like Spanish and reggaeton because it fits our audience. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes, depending on where the music is, uh, our, we cater mostly you know, 25 to maybe now 40. Um, but it depends on how it goes. But just top 40, R&B, hip-hop, just a mixture of everything. Uh, now, I've noticed that a lot of the radio stations have like, you know, they have like, I don't know, high definition. So they have like three channels on the oh, same. Oh, yes, we do too. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And it, now it, that means you have a good radio or a good car. Because <laughs> not everybody has those HD channels. Yes, so, so we do. So is that a different shows on each one of those? Yes, they are different radio stations. Um, and they're like sister stations. But it's just, got, I guess, another opportunity. They're programmed totally differently. Another opportunity for them just to click in and, and listen. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you had mentioned overnight. Did they still have live DJs overnight or does it now? Things have evolved. Yes. There, see, that's the thing about when I came up in radio and how um, newbies are coming into radio now. It's so different. Before, um, you get trained. You have people helping you, teach you the mechanics of overnight, um, really grooming you for radio. Now, a lot of things are voice tracked. Um especially after the pandemic, there's no money. So 10 people are doing one job. So there's really not overnights. And usually it's not even tracked. It's usually just music. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any fear that uh, AI could come in and do the whole thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. That everything has changed. It's like the industry. And I mean, even no matter where you work, things have changed with the way um, things work, but AI and then technology, and it's really evolved the way um, radio works and it's crazy because even though that's evolved the way that they track ratings is very old old school arbitron and the way they track it is old school it's basically like an old beeper that people carry around and they um (laughs) count for thousands of people so some radio station could be number one in x y and z but it's based on Two or three people that can make that difference. <laughs> wow. Now, does, and does it even count like your, because I assume you guys stream. Yes. And they're working on technology for that. I believe some of it does now, but it hasn't caught up to what it should be. Now, before it used to be actually something they call a diary, which is people would um, write down what your favorite station is and how long you listen. But then when they came up with the PPM, which is like the little beeper kind of thing, um, they realized People's perception they was different. Yeah. Or they think they listen for three hours and they listen for 10 minutes. Yeah. So that changed the way we, we do radio. Wow. Cause and I too, I would imagine that because you stream, it's not, you know, you're beyond local radio. Mm-hmm. Like I know, like at Christmas time, I'm I listen even in my car to a lot of streaming mm-hmm. stations that mm-hmm. are playing Christmas music. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of be you know, I have, I guess, a much bigger audience. Yes. And it's a beautiful thing because it is a bigger audience. You have a bigger reach. However, advertisement comes from how your ratings are. Ratings are dependent on what you're doing locally. So it's a constant battle, even with social media. Like we have to post on social media. We have to be live on social media. And that helps as far as the marketing and our brand, but we still have to do things on a radio to be able to get those ratings. Because if you don't have the ratings, you don't have the money and mm. you know how that works. So, so what, what gets the right, like what are people, what do people in 2023 or 2024 want on the radio? What are um, they looking for? I think the same thing as before, meaning is, is they want to, be able to relate to you. Um, they want to be able to win things. They want to, um, but they also want choices and no interruption. So it's a constant battle and we're pretty much, we have uh, consultants that listen to us and say, hey, you can do this differently. And it's constantly evolving, especially with the morning show. Um, so our goal is always to connect. Our goal is always um, to do good storytelling, um, to be able to, 
have them listen to you as much as possible so that they feel like they're part of your family. And the more part of your family they truly are, the more they'll listen. Because I, I, and I don't know if this is true at all. So, but for me, I know if I'm listening to the radio in the evening, it's more about the music. Whereas mm -hmm. if I'm listening in the morning, it's, it's more about the DJs. Great, observa I, you know, uh -huh, great observation. The thing is, is that, you know, morning routines are usually different than afternoon routines. In the morning, people want to hear more talk um, and they kind of listen in the background. They're getting their kids ready for school. They're going to work. They want it. They're in the mood to connect with somebody. After work, people are like, ugh. Right. So they just want to hear a song. They want to hear some jokes. It's a lot tighter as far as um, programming. Now, do you guys c come up with the contest, the, you know, if you're going to call if just the craziness or do you have writers that do that or how does that? Well, that's a great question, Pastor Troy. Back in the days when there was money, there was producers, there was writers, there were um, social media people. But now, unless you're one of the uh, morning shows that have multiple stations, meaning across the country, and you're syndicated, uh -huh. um, or you're a station that has a lot of money, usually most people um, are doing their own thing. Like for my show personally, it's me and my uh, co-host DJ Zog. We're writers, we're producers, we're this, we're that. We do it all. So that's so a, a lot a of stress. Yeah. It every is. Day. It is. It is. To come up with something. Mm -hmm. And, th and then just like talk about something else, talk about <laughs> something else. But you know what? A lot of it is just relating to what your life is like. So mm. we talk about our lives. And the cool thing is that we're really friends in real life. Right. Like literally, we, I'm like, why are you calling me? I just saw you for five hours straight. But he's like, oh, this, this, I went to the gym and this. And we kind of, you know, put our lives out there. And it's just amazing how other people are just regular like us. And, and you can say, oh, you know, I relate to this. This happened to me at the gym too, or with my kids or whatever it may be. So how's, how do you deal with uh, like when something negative is happening in the culture or sad or, you know, whether mm. it's something like way back 9-11 or COVID Correct. and you've got to come in every day and not ignore it. But at the same time, you know, I'm not listening to be discouraged. I'm listening for yes, hope. Yes, and that's a good point because people do want to hear um, radio to be uplifted and, and to be happy and to forget about, I guess, reality. Um, but when it comes down to things like 9-11 or sad news locally, we do report it. Um, depending on how big it is, we'll open up the phone lines. But we do try our best to uplift people and try not to stay too somber. However, you don't ignore something that's happening, you know? Right. So like when the building fell down. That's exactly what I was thinking right now. Uh-huh. We kind of just gave updates. Of course, that day we, you know, um, updated everyone when it's happening and we give information. Um, like I said, not ignore it, but then kind of keep it moving to uplift them or let them forget about what's really happening. Right. And not forget, but kind of a distraction from reality. Right. Right, because mm -hmm. there's so many places you can go to get the news or to get an update. Yeah, I mean, you can even just go on social media and right. find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's really not really our job as it was before to break news like that, but um, you can't just act like it's not happening either. So it's a balance of that stuff. Yeah, so again, I, I would imagine there's some tension involved because you're going to have to deal with your own emotions. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and I mean, I've cried on air sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. it, it, and, and people can relate because it's just a sad thing and, and it's okay, but you have to compose yourself and keep it moving. You have a job to do. So you said, you're talking about money um, in the past, there was more money in the radio. What What's changed that? Is it streaming? Is it something else? What's been the... Well, what's changed is that, number one, I mean, everything's different post-pandemic Right. Um, with that. Number two, yes, the radio industry has changed as far as how we, I guess, reach people because there are more options. I mean, think even when I first started a radio, I didn't, I didn't work in radio with cart days. You know what a cart is? No. It, okay. See, okay. A cart is like some little, I don't either. I've never even seen one in my life, but I've heard about it. It's like a thing that you physically put in to be able, um, almost like a, a older version of a cassette and that's how they used to you know they put something in something and it'd, it'd go on air so going back from those days where we would broadcast radio that way and nobody really had that many options we were like gold because they get everything from us the news the entertainment um it, it was everything but when you have different options as far as you know 
listening to music and being particular about what you want to hear. We're just battling a lot of other monsters to be able to get your attention. But nobody has attention span nowadays, right. you know? <laughs> uh, see, my my idea of radio, I'm of the age, I'm going to speak a, a lot older maybe than the folks listening, but is uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, that TV mm -hmm. show from mm -hmm. way back in the day. Oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, my uh -huh. uh, my vision of uh -huh. uh, of radio. Have you uh, had now as a result of I mean you know literally having an audience of millions of people over uh, all these years? Have you ever had to deal with like a stalker or somebody who did pursue you in some uh, a way that was uncomfortable to you? Not me personally, but there really have been some situations with coworkers that literally have had to have restraining orders because there's some people that have deal with mental illness. Right. And um, it can be a scary situation to where um, she literally walks around with protection. I've never really dealt with that. The only thing I've ever dealt with is maybe some weirdness on social media. Um, you know, there was an incident that was very serious, which somebody was probably following me and I didn't know, but leaving work. I ended up getting robbed at gunpoint. Oh, my goodness. So it can be a dangerous situation, especially when you're a woman and by yourself. Right. And when you're comfortable where you work and you're comfortable anywhere, you know. So um, I've never had a stalker. I've had a scary situation. But a couple of my coworkers, which are females, have dealt with that. Because I would think, you know, especially like you say, when you're on every day, there's they an know intimacy. where you're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that gets developed. They know what time you come on, you know, and yes. then social media adds to what they know about you. Somebody recently told me and I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to be a little bit private on certain things. Um, they said, oh, you and your husband both drive a so and so vehicle. I was like, oh, man, <laughs> they zoom in screenshot, you know. Yes. And they can, you know, the internet knows all. Everything. You go where your name is, like, you can't hide anything. Now, what are your, are your kids old enough to understand what you do? What do they think about what you do? Um, yes, they are. Uh, and um, my son, who's nine, he uh, grew up with me being in radio. He went to the radio station. And so him hearing me so many times, he's kind of woody himself. Um, I, it's funny because he grew up in it and uh, I started recording our conversations and now he has his own segment. <laughs> it's called Real Talk with Z because people liked it so much. They're like, hey, we haven't heard from your son in a bit. And I'm like, well, well now you're requesting him. So uh, once a week, uh, it's a conversation that we have and it's about anything. Like today, um, I had a conversation with him about uh, he was complaining about his chores. So I said, okay, well, I'll change your chores up. How about you start uh, cleaning the gutters? I was just being silly. And his reaction was priceless. He said, mom, that's unsafe. I said, I'll give you a, I'll, I'll get you a harness. He said, what do you think the neighbors are going to be thinking about me cleaning with a the harness? They're going to think so we're crazy, but we get a good reaction. So he has like a love for, you know, talking and speaking and being kind of witty. And my, um, my bonus daughter as well. So I guess maybe they'll do something in it too. Uh, but now with, you know, YouTube and everything, the kids are very witty nowadays and they know how to work a phone and oh, yeah. cameras and stuff. At such a young age. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it's an, uh, amazing, uh, you know, when you think about the opportunities and the challenges that uh, all of our technology faces. So tell me, what is the most um, em Interesting. I, I won't say embarrassing. I'll just say interesting on air thing that you've experienced. Interesting. Oh, you know what? Something that I didn't expect that just made my year meeting Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie is honestly, I didn't grow up with this music. I was never like, oh my gosh, I yes. like, love that's Lionel Richie. My, that's my, <laughs> yeah, my it's season. my mom's music. Yes. But can I tell you when I met him? He was the most kind, most humble, most amazing human being that I fell in love with this man. I'm like, wow, my, number one, you're an icon. Number two, you're rich and famous. Like you usually walk in somewhere, do an interview, hi and bye. But he sang with us in the morning. He uh, played the keyboard and oh, really? I was pleasantly surprised. And that memory stuck with me forever. Like when people ask me, who's your favorite person you've ever interviewed? And I say that they're really surprised. I'm even surprised, but it goes to show you never really know somebody. And then when you meet them, it's like, oh, wow, they're they're a cool person. Yeah, well, that, that's nice to hear. Yeah. You know, you often hear the uh, opposites. So. Yeah, the egos and stuff. Yes. You know, sometimes um, when you have a perception of a celebrity, it's so crazy. You think something of them. Once you meet them, it's totally different. It's totally different. Now, are you surprised or disappointed the majority of the time? Um, Not, I guess, 
maybe disappointed, I guess, sometimes, because uh, you want them to be nice or you want them to be cool. But I guess sometimes people are busy and right. I give them the benefit of the doubt because right. I know how it is. I can only imagine talking to a million people all day, maybe the same questions. So I'm not really bothered by it. Um, Unless somebody's really rude, which is not very often. But those people that are rude, you do remember. <laughs> now, so do they come by to promote their records? Is that mainly yes. what they're... Yes, and you know what? Not as often now since Zoom and post-pandemic because the artists got comfortable doing that. They skip like, you guys and go, right? Yeah, it's, or, or they do. They want to do a Zoom because they don't have to leave. They don't have to travel. They don't have to, you uh, know, right. yeah. So they don't have to uh, walk into a studio and be as physical and, and drain. They can sit in their living room in their pajamas and do everything that they need to do. Um, but yeah, usually if it's like a concert that we're doing right. with them or whatever, they'll come in the studio. Wow. It's always fun to have like a live interview. Now, have you, has, have you had like a Taylor Swift or somebody that just overwhelms the whole system you know oh absolutely as a matter of fact there was a interview that i did um with selena gomez and when you do interviews especially with big artists they give you a list they don't want to talk about this don't mention this don't do this don't do that i guess because they don't want negative you know press right. or whatever and i'm not usually one for who digs for negative stuff anyways right. but i said okay check 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 and it happened to be that um I went live on Facebook at the same time and it was just crazy because I was going to kind of try to look decent because I was going live on Facebook. It was pouring rain. My car had broken down. I was soaking wet from head to toe and I had to do an interview and I was like, oh my goodness, God help me. How am I going to do this? And they're going to see me looking crazy like this. I said, I don't care. I'm going to put the camera on. So I spoke to her and uh, one of the things that they said is don't mention anything about um, her relationship because at the time, back in the day, uh, she was supposedly dating an artist called The Weeknd. So I said, of course not. I, I, I won't. I, you know, I follow the rules. I'm not going to, you know, get an artist mad because I won't come back to your station. But her and I got into this conversation and I guess she forgot that I'm interviewing her <laughs> and we're chit chatting and we started talking about her song and she revealed that she was dating The Weeknd and I didn't realize she did that until the end of the interview. I said, did she just say that? TMZ, the New York press, E! Online. It went viral. And it was Selena Gomez breaking the news <laughs> that she was dating him. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And I mean, I Googled my name a few times and it popped up. And I was like, that was awesome. And it was something I didn't expect to happen because they told me, number one, not to talk about it. But she kind of slipped up because right. she felt comfortable, you know. And um, I thought that was that was a cool moment. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh... Yeah, I get something out of you, Pastor Troy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that's that a, pin number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Now, I did, I did, I don't know if Pastor Danny was telling me or if I read that you uh, tried out for The Voice. I tried out for American Idol. American Idol. I used to love to sing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try out. I don't care. And I, um, I tried out. I even had a voice coach to help me. What song did I sing? I still believe. Yeah, that was, I don't even remember the name, but I remember that part. And uh, I tried out and they said no, but that was the most, that was like the best no I've ever had in my life. I just felt like, you know, back in the days it was cool to be rejected from American Idol because right. you know, the rejects, you get camera time. Right, right. And I had my cowbell and they're like, no, bye. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> now, did you do, where'd you do that at here? It was, yeah, it was at the AAA at the time. Mm -hmm, uh. mm -hmm. Years ago. And the cool thing is, is that I had a VIP ticket, I guess, because somebody in a radio did. So I didn't have to wait days or hours. I just went right in to get a no. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, I know we've had a few folks here who have uh, been on The Voice. Oh, or yes. Mac it was Metal. somebody that used to sing it, here, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. She yeah. had an angelic yeah, voice. Yeah. She made, what did she? Brooke? Top two? Did Brooke? Top, top three. Top three. Yes. She I followed her. Three. Yes. I used to love hearing her. Yeah. She had an angelic voice, almost as good as mine. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They just <laughs> they just liked her better. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was all politics. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if somebody happens to be listening and they would love to get in radio, what would you tell them to do? And oh, that's a good question. Because it's so different than before. I would say try out. Meaning try to be an intern because, you know, sometimes you think you want to do something and then you don't want to do it. you got to find what your love mm -hmm. is. I thought I wanted to be a singer and I fell in love with the radio. There are people that walk in and 
I want to be in radio and, and I love, I love, I love to, um, uh, I like to have people shadow me and I like to help them because I remember I was that hungry girl. Um, and you know, within that hunger, I found something that I love so much. So I would say, try it out. And if you like it, go for it. And nowadays you don't even really need a radio station. You have podcasts, right. you have so many other avenues. And I even try to teach that to my kids. Use the resources that you have. Start your dream now because sometimes like people go to college um, and they spend so much money on a degree and they get into it and they hate it. Yeah. Try it out. And that's just, uh, that that's a a bad place to be. It is a bad place to be. Find your passion and that's your passion. Go for it. And you don't necessarily have to work at a radio station. You can, you know, be your own boss or maybe find an avenue that you love something within radio. Some people love producing, you know, and now there's jobs within, um, you know, producing and even now radio shows or TV shows. So right. yeah. So get in there and, and be kind, do everything, get the coffee, put the sugar and, uh, Cook for people, bring them right. gifts, and, and do what you got to do to get that experience. Because it's hard to get experience now in radio because they're not opportunities like right. there were before. There's more limited. It's very limited. Like I said earlier, there's no overnight shifts. There's no mm. really shadowing people. So if you get an opportunity, it's a blessing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate uh, you coming. I also appreciate the ministry you do here at Potential. And yes, using and I gifts. love it. And let me tell you, that, that right there was a goal. I always said, um, you know... I've been here for years, like 15 years. And I said, you know what? I want to use my God-given talent to take it to the next level. And uh, I prayed about it. And somebody read and said, hey, why don't you host online? I'm like, are you sure? And everybody welcomed me. And, and it's it was the best thing ever. And, you know, having you on my radio show, which I had <laughs> a couple of months ago, I was like, oh, my gosh, Star Truck. And now I'm on your podcast. So it's like praying about it, believing in it. And speaking it mm. is such a beautiful thing, and, and it's so true. I remember one time I was at a she night here at Potential Church, and we talked about dreams and goals. And there's one thing that I was telling my friend the other day is I said, you know, something about when I speak something, I almost have a, a slight fear. Not fear in a bad way, but fear because I know if I speak it, I, I have the capability of it coming true. Mm. And I wrote down on my... Uh, little paper on she night, what I wanted. And I said, I wanted a complete family. I wanted to get married and have another child. I said, I wanted to use my God given talents for the glory of God. Wow. And I wanted, um, uh, my son, to, or I wanted to, my son to excel in whatever it is um, that he wanted to do in school. In the following year, I went to, a. um, uh, a night out here at a connect group. Uh -huh. And they said, if anybody has their card out, bring it out and see what God has done. Everything was on my checklist. Wow. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like real. This is real. <laughs> so I just think that that's really awesome. And this has been one of my dreams. So thank you very much. Oh, well, it's an honor to have you. And if people want to catch Ivy Unleashed. Evie, Pastor Troy. What Evie. Did, I, did I say Ivy yes, again? Yes, it's okay. <laughs> Evie Unleashed. I do apologize. It's okay. But um, if they want to catch Evie yes, Unleashed. Yes, you can right. catch us. Um, me and my co-host, DJ Zog, we're on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. locally on Power 96, which is 96.5. But with technology, you can get your phone, download the Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y, and search Power 96, and you can listen anytime. Power 96. And you can follow me on Instagram, at Evie Unleashed. That's I-V-Y Unleashed. That's right. It's spelled Ivy. Yes, yes, but Ivy. But it's Evie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Evie Unleashed. Well, thanks so much for... Uh, coming and hanging out. Thank you so much, Pastor Troy. I had fun. I so much appreciate it. Appreciate your spirit. You're always thank an you. encouragement. Thank so you. You're the real thing. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Like I said, it is always an honor to get to hang out with you. I want to remind you, if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe and share with somebody. And don't forget, we'll catch you next Thursday right here on the Troy Grambling Podcast. God bless. And we'll see you later.